Good morning, everyone. It is Friday, and it's commute to work time, which means let's talk about everything, right? Let's talk about dividends, talk about retiring as soon as possible so we're not forced to do the nine to five because we need to forever. So some topics for today. Um, as always, treat this like a podcast. I actually found a podcast uh, category on the YouTube website. It's, you know, I need to start using the website. I do everything on the phone. But the website had a podcast section, so I did move uh, these videos to the, uh, the podcast section. However, when you click on it, it still shows the video, so I'm not really sure what the point of uh, the podcast section is. All right. Um, so first off, I wanted to cover what happened yesterday and what happened yesterday is Defiant ETFs have announced, uh, their first distribution and, uh, that noise just so you know is rain, you know, and of, of course the bumps on the road because New Jersey roads are horrible. So anyway, Defiant ETF newest, it's not a covered call ETF, it is a uh, put ETF, they sell puts on the indexes, they sell puts on the NASDAQ, they sell puts on the S&P 500, and they will sell puts on the Russell 2000 once that fund comes out. But right now, QQQY, you know, they sell puts on the NASDAQ, this fund was launched about, I think, 12 days ago, 12 business days, 12 trading days. And the fund is around $20, a little less, I think. And they made, the distribution is $1.10. I mean, that is ridiculous. It comes to like 60, I think I said 67% annual yield, which is ridiculous for 12 you know, whatever the amount of days is, it's about half, a little less than half the month. So imagine double that, getting that in a distribution. Someone asked me, is it possible that they use their cash uh, towards that distribution? I mean, I sure as hell hope not. I don't want them doing that. I want the income to only be what they make off of the options premium. So, but anyway, so QQQY, Paid a dollar ten, and Jeppy J E P Y paid ninety cents. What's even more impressive with Jeppy is not only because they're on the S and P five hundred, which is less volatile than the Nasdaq, but they launched less than ten days ago, and they're paying you ninety cents, and they cost again a little less than twenty dollars. Their yield is fifty five percent. So multiply that by two or two and a half, and I mean, forget it. And now it's starting to pour. And by the way, it rained Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. It stopped Wednesday, and then it rained Thursday, and today's Friday, and it's raining. Just so you guys know what the hell kind of week this has been. But when it rains, it pours, right? Anyway, um... So yeah, those are the distributions for Jeppy and QQQY. And the best part overall is X dividend date is Monday, which I believe is October 2nd. And since today is the day before X dividend date, the trading day before X dividend date, you can still buy into these funds to qualify for the distribution which is pretty awesome. I know YieldMax does the same. They give you a day. Um, so you have an opportunity. I mean, if you're just hearing this news now, you, you don't have to be like, oh, crap, I wish I would've bought it. No, you can buy it. You can buy it today, and it's you're gonna get $1.10. For every QQQY, you're gonna get $1.10. I mean, you buy five shares. You get five bucks. I mean, I know 
you know, we know how the funds work, right? When they when they pay you that distribution, they uh, you know, they drop the fund will drop by that amount. But hopefully, in time, you know, throughout the month, it recovers until they pay the next distribution. Also, keep in mind this fund they sell, you know, it's daily options, so it's it's more risky than yield banks. Which, you know, I know that's surprising. I don't know how much more risk we can handle, right? But they do daily options and they sell puts pretty much at the money. So if the, if the market tanks any one day, you're going to feel it. And you're not going to like it. But it's, it's possible. So, and as a... As always, before I forget, this is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. I'm a guy going to work who's trying to retire on dividends and sharing my content, hoping to help others, you know, get some motivation for my videos. So, so yeah, the, uh, you know, again, they sell daily options. They sell puts daily and it's a bullish move. So they want the stock to go up or the index to go up for that day. And if it does, they win. If it doesn't, they could lose money. But the doesn't is really what matters. How how much further down can it go in one day? Because they have to cover that gap. And you're going to feel that pain. So the risk is there, okay? The risk is certainly there. Um, which kind of brings me into the next topic because... I make a lot of yield max videos, mainly about Tesla holdings. And a, a, one of the famous questions is, you know, it, well, a couple questions. Is, it a, is this safe or is this a long-term investment? So, I mean, my answer to that is, it is what you need it to be. So, this is how I, this is how I treat yield max, this is how I treat Defiance ETFs, this is how I treat Clip, and you know, any of the others. Rec shares, if I dare invest in them, which I'll, I'll talk about them in a second, but um, I treat it like this. I'm investing in a fund manager to do options trading, and that's it. I'm giving someone money, and I'm saying, okay, sell options for this stock or this index, and make me money. Just give me my portion of those options premium. And that's it. You know, they have to be smart. You know, these fund managers, you, you need to trust them. They need to make good moves. This is why I'm following Tesla and the moves that they're making, by the way. Because I'm pretty sure that same person is running the majority of the other funds. I could be wrong. That's actually a question I should probably ask. But um, this weather sucks, man. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so you're basically here saying here, here's a thousand dollars, make me some money from selling options on this stock or this index. And that it's, just, it's really as simple as that. They can't control what the market's doing, but they probably have a better idea of what the market does than you do. This is their job. This is their living. So would you rather take your money and invest it? you know, and sell options on your own when you have a nine to five, when you're busy all day, when you have a family, probably not. I mean, I've done it and I've, I, I'm not going to lie. I lost a lot of money. It was stupid, but I, I got greedy. I sold options on AMC. I sold options on GME because they were high volatility and I got murdered. I lost a lot of money. I mean, not that much, but Enough to make me say, okay, I actually learned a lot though in the process, which was good, but it taught me that, okay, I, I am not ready for this. I am not ready to sell options. I don't have the time. I definitely don't have the patience. So when these funds came out, obviously QILD was already out, but you know, I'm not going to lie. I never really looked too much into it. I just saw them as a 10% great. Should I, should I buy them there? Nah. But then Yield Max came out with the 
individual covered call ETFs, which was very, very smart. And it opened your eyes. It, I mean, I knew how much you, I could make in options, but I just couldn't do it because I'm not, you know, I'm not sophisticated enough in that realm. I don't follow the market enough. I'm not smart enough, and I don't have enough time to do that. But if you're, if there's an expert out there willing to do it for you, then yes, you can make a crap load of money on options trading. Crap load. So just think of it like that. Just plain and simple. Here's my money. Go play around with your options, print, options contracts and make me money. You know, you have to know what kind of strategy they have though. You have to look in the prospectus. Um, most of these are bullish plays, so you have to be bullish on the underlying, bullish on the index. Uh, but outside of that, you have to trust the fund manager, which reminds me of some content maybe I should make. Um, I should look into all of the fund managers of these ETFs that we're investing in, right? Go to Wikipedia or something and at least do some, some research, right? Do we know, you know, we know Jay because he puts himself out there. But we know Jay via YouTube videos. Do we know Jay, all of Jay, right? What else is there to know about Jay? I know he explained his history and his history, uh, his resume is pretty impressive. So it's, it's always good to, you know, check it out. Um, so anyway, treat them just like that. Don't compare them to Coca-Cola, you know, Procter & Gamble, McDonald's, uh, SCHD. It's, it's not comparable. It's completely, completely different. I know SCHD is also an ETF, and you're also paying a much lesser management fee, but all they're doing is buying individual stocks, and that's it. You know, it's not often that they make moves either. And if they do, you know, one to oh, sell this, buy this. What do we do? Imagine that compared to selling options every day. And you have to be really careful when you sell options every day. So the 0.99 cents is, I mean, the 0.99% is well worth it, in my opinion. Uh, but like I said, you can't compare these to SHD. SHD, yes, they will make you 3.5% every year. And they'll increase that 3.5% every year. That is shown by historical performance. But Tesla will pay you 5% a month. Right? 60% a year divided by 12, 5%. Or 3%. Or 4%, right? So you own Tesla one month with the same amount of money. You'll make the same percentage, if not more, than you would in SHD in one year. Just just think about that just for a second, okay? Let that let that sink in. Obviously, if you have millions of dollars, go the safe route, right? Buy SHD, buy in, buy the safe stocks. Because you don't need to, you know, you don't need that risk. You don't need it in your life. You're a millionaire. You can make, you know, a lot of money off a couple millions. But if you're not a millionaire, if you're a thousand air or a ten thousand air or a hundred thousand air, you don't want that. You know, three percent. Nah, I'm good. I'll, I'll stick with my fifty percent yield. But uh, but yeah. So that's, that's how they work. I hope, hope that made sense to people. And I mentioned direct shares. Um, I made a video yesterday. It did pretty well. People, people, uh, it was fun. It was a fun video. But long story short, direct shares is another, again, I believe it's a covered call ETF. They're going to sell calls on very, very volatile stocks. Like, the most volatile stocks out there. And it doesn't end there. They're gonna do two times leverage. So they're gonna sell calls on AMC that has 100% IV, but they're taking double the risk. So any movement up or down goes double, right? It's like the TQQQ, triple leverage, that's times three, these are times two. Which, with double the risk, you get double the reward though. So, you know, just think about that. That that IV, double that IV, think about what that yield's gonna be. 
I mean, Nicola, whatever the hell it is, some car EV company. I mean, what I calculated was like 300%, uh, possibly 300% dividend. I know it doesn't sound like real, but if you take that risk, believe me, it could be real. Um, I, you know, I don't know about that company, so I'm probably not touching that one. I'm not sure if I'm touching any of them. I really need to think about it because it's just getting out of control. Yield Max was really the extent of my risk tolerance. Um, but, you know, never say never. We'll see how it goes. I'm definitely on board with QQQY. I know that's, like I said, a little more risky than Yield Max. So I'm, I am, I already own them. But um, I'm probably going to buy 10 more of each today just to get a little more money on payday for that. And then I'll take that money and I'll buy more of whatever, whatever I please. I'll create adding to my monthly income hopefully now and going forward okay what else still raining by the way I apologize if the sound sucks for my car podcast but you know this is what you're dealt with which brings me to my next uh, topic which is my YouTube and I just wanted to explain you know why my YouTube what is the way it is I do every single thing on my phone. I don't have a laptop to work with. I have my work laptop, but I don't use that. I have my phone where I do everything. I make videos and I create the pictures or the thumbnails or typically I get help with the thumbnails though. Um, but uh, and if, if you need a guy, by the way, to do your thumbnails or your content cre you know, content creation help, let me know. I'll send you his info. Um, it's really good. Uh, but anyway, what the hell was I saying? The, uh, my YouTube is the way it is because that's, that's just what I'm, you know, that's what I'm using. I'm just using my phone and that's it. And that's all I've been doing for five years. But it wasn't until recently that I got back into YouTube that you know, I, I changed, I completely changed my strategy from the typical snooze fest of retiring on dividends by 65 to retiring on dividends in five to 10 years or using income now, right? Living off income now, having fun with income now, not, not your typical, you know, retirement, traditional IRA, Roth IRA, Roth 401k, traditional 401k, no. I'm not limited to, you know, I don't, my funds are available now. They're not locked in until I'm old and gray and fatter and uglier. You know, they're available now. If I make $2,000 next month, which I probably won't, maybe, maybe 15, hope 100, maybe, maybe 1800, but whatever, whatever I make next month, I can take that money and pay off my credit card or I could essentially buy a laptop for my YouTube channel right or I could take my family somewhere I could do whatever I want but if it's in a Roth IRA or a 401k all I can do is reinvest it 401k is even worse because you can't it's limited funds here's your 401k and here's what you can buy Oh, thank you. Thank you, Fearless Vanguard, for giving me only your funds and a few others to choose from. Wow. If that's not double dipping. I mean, come on, dude. How much is the company getting off this? Like, freaking 401k. I'm just like, the more and more I, I just think about it, it's like, unreal. At least give us the option to invest in what we want. They're called self-directed plans. I know in 10 to 20 years, at least probably 10 years from now, every 401k will have this option because it's gonna become more popular. Uh, but right now, they say, oh, the people can't be trusted, right? They don't, nobody wants that. Yes, everyone wants that, you know? I don't want you touching, I don't want your stupid index funds anymore. I wanna choose what I wanna buy, all right? Not limited choices. Anyway, I got off topic here, but I just wanted to explain, because I know like 
someone mentioned to me, um, you know, your thumbnails, they're not, you're making a thumbnail of the video when I, when I do my search, but I'm not, I'm actually have a thumbnail. I make my videos in portrait because that's how it's set up, right? I make my videos, um, you know, like this, right? So, but I'm saving, uh, you know, these thumbnails are landscape. So I'm saving those as landscape, but the videos are portrait. So for some reason, YouTube can't handle, um, you know, on the search, the preview being a landscape showing a portrait video. And the reason is they do the quick preview. So if you put your mouse over it, they show the, like the, you know, some of the video. So I assume that's why, but why not shrink my thumbnail into a portrait and then do it, right? Because some of these thumbnails, again, I have someone doing them for me. They're pretty damn good and they could be a little catchy. So I, yeah, I know that's kind of like screwing me up. I'm sure I can sure I can get more views, but listen, I, I'm, I'm always on the go. I'm using my phone. So it is what it is. I'm having, I am having success. Like people enjoy this content. So it's working. My subscribers are slowly going up. My views are, well, they can scatter. It depends what kind of content I put out. But this, this by far is my least popular video because, you know, people don't want to, people watch videos. But for those that don't, this is for you, right? This is the podcast. This is the talk about whatever the hell we could talk about during our commute. This is when you drive to work and you need something to listen to, here I am. And by the way, drive careful. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm for. And I, I do the same thing. You know, when I drive to work or home from work, I find something like this and I listen to it. So I figured, why can't I be that guy, right? Um, because, you know, my goal here, I'm just going to be real. I'm just another guy. I'm 41 years old. I have your typical corporate BS job, nine to five that I don't want to do forever and I want to retire soon. So I'm probably in the same boat as most of you, right? I know a lot of you are probably younger than me, which is awesome if you have a jump start. Um, but, you know, I started this in my, I started investing a while back, but no, maybe six years ago. But uh, it, it wasn't really until this year I said, you know, screw it. But let's, let's change it up here. Let's change it up the typical crap. Let's go for it. So yeah, that's why my YouTube is not as advanced as all these others you see. It's not, it's not pretty. It's not fancy. You're not gonna get pop-ups of, you know, whatever. You're not gonna get me sharing, a, you know, I'm sharing a screen, but you're not gonna see my face going from here to there. It's all on the phone. Will that change one day? Possibly. Um, but again, I am very busy with life. Um, you know, I work full time. I have two kids and I coach two baseball teams at the moment. So it's, it's insanity. I mean, the fact that I can squeeze these out is, you know, it, it's borderline, which is why I'm doing this on the drive, obviously, because I don't have the time and, you know, the time that others have. But what I do have is, you know, the want and the need to, you know, make the content, spread the word, right? So as long as people want to listen, I'm going to continue, you know, doing this. So, so that was really, you know, the three topics I wanted to cover. Um, but yeah, if you guys, let me know what you guys think of my YouTube format. If you say, like, if you think it matters that much to you that the content is cheap looking or you can tell it's on the phone or you think the thumbnail issue like would, you know, make or break my channel. I don't know. It's, uh, again, I just got monetized. I don't know if I told you guys, but I just got monetized, uh, last week. And, you know, it's so far so good. I think I've made $100 this week. You know, nothing, nothing like 
you know, I can't retire yet, obviously, on YouTube, which I, that was never in the plans anyway, but if it's a possibility, then sure. Uh, as these get, you know, as long as my count goes up, my views go up, my subs go up, and people share that they enjoy it, I will continue, because this is fun for me, I enjoy this. You know, I'm not, my videos aren't me lying, it's just me talking about what I believe, what I want. God, this what a shitty commute, oh my god. Uh, just one of those, you know, one of those rainy commutes. By the way, if you're still watching, if you have a long commute, please share how long. I want to see. This is I, I commute an hour one way, which I believe it's a little above average. Well, for the for the country, it's probably way above average. For New Jersey, it's probably slightly above average. But, um, but yeah, let me know how far you guys commute and uh, if this is, are these videos where you listen to, you know? Do you listen to these videos only during your commute? Because that's pretty funny if you do. You're talking to a guy making a video while commuting, while you're commuting. So, I think that's pretty hilarious. So, yeah, that's it. Um, I don't think I have anything much more to say, but as always, I appreciate everyone watching. Uh, you know, my content, leaving comments and, uh, you know, sharing feedback. It's, it's, uh, it's good. You know, it's good to know. It's good to hear. All right. I'm out of here. I'm almost at work. Not really, but I'll talk to you later. Bye.